Hello, my Wealthy Wife fam and friends. This is Ms. Sophia, author of Wealthy Wife, Meeting, Dating, and Marriage Rich Men, as well as the founder of the Wealthy Wife Academy, and of course, your godmother, Affluent Romance. How are you doing, Wealthy Wife fam and friends? All right, as I've mentioned in prior audio slash videos, I'm going to be doing announcements before I start the conversation. I first want to thank my Wealthy Wife Muse Preparatory School Goddaughters that joined me this past Saturday in our monthly Zoom call. It is always such a pleasure seeing all of you. Oh my gosh, such beautiful women. Like I said, just beautiful, glowing, you know, open to receiving information, asking questions, having conversations, sharing comments and thoughts with me. And it is such a beautiful moment. So thank you guys for uh, coming. And for those of you that are in the, for the preparatory school and you weren't able to make it, because I realize that everybody can make the calls. You know, some folks are working on Saturday. I get that. So what I do is I do record because I also teach. I do like a, a short class. I do a class before the Q&A in the comment section. So that recording will be going into, I think it's the Muse Preparatory School Extras, it would be going into that particular file. So if you missed the call on Saturday, like I said, you will still have access to it. I mean, not the call, but the teaching, because I talked about, you know, standing in your space of joy. So that's going to be available if you listen to it. I've got to put, I haven't loaded it yet, but it'll be up before the end of today. Um, also, for those of you that may be interested in the Wealthy Web Preparatory, Muse Preparatory School, I finally finished out the outline. The description is actually on my WealthyWife.com page. You can actually go into the video description, click on the link, and it'll take you over there. It'll explain to you what the course is about. It'll break down what the classes are about. Because uh, as I mentioned beforehand, in that $90, it's $99 per month to join. It's a, you know, it's a membership program, so it's $99 to join, and I start you out with, and for those of you that are coming right now, you're starting out with over $3,000 worth of master classes. Yeah. Now, I'm not going to be doing that every single month, but to get you started, because I have different things I plan on doing each month. We have master classes that I add to the, uh, you know, to your learning platform. I have, I'll be doing different ceremonies. I'll be sharing just different information on in the preparatory school because as I've mentioned beforehand this is the prep for the online academy I figured out over the past couple of years once again I've been teaching classes working with women obviously the privately my private clients I work with um you know my live master class I've been teaching literally since 2019 is when I start teaching the live master classes and I'm winding them down now I've got one more coming up because I usually do an end of year class I was going to stop the last class that I taught but I thought, you know what, I always do an end-of-the-year master class. So there will be a live master class coming up. I'll be putting it together this weekend. I'll be putting it out there for you guys to take a look at and roll into probably by sometime next week. It's a fun, it's a beautiful. I, I love the live master classes. I really do. I really, really do enjoy them because it gives me a chance to get together with my goddaughters. And, you know, we start plotting and planning about what we're going to do, especially for 2023. Can you believe the year is almost over? 2022, we're sitting, what, two and a half months away? Yeah, literally two and a half months. In two and a half months, 10 weeks, 2022 is over. And we'll be in 2023. How has this year been for you thus far? I know my goddaughters that really are committed to, you know, their progress and their journey are doing great. Like I said, engagements, marriages, new babies, uh, dating, you know, in new relationships. I just, you know, they're starting their own businesses, I, I, writing books. I'm like, oh my gosh, <laughs> it's, it's so cool. I mean, I, I get so excited about it. I know you guys hear me. You're thinking, oh my gosh. But if... Mm, if you can stand in my shoes, because remember, I'm working with these women. I know their origin stories. I know their origins. You know, we're working together. I'm learning about my goddaughter. So how they come into the world of wealthy wife. And so many, like, it's the dissatisfaction. It literally is the case, like, you know what? I'm done. I've said this in other audios, and you guys have heard this. I'm sure you even have experienced it yourself. I did what they told me to do, and nothing has happened that they said would happen. You know, I've been the good girl. I've done it. I've, you know, I followed the guidelines. I followed the rules, so to speak, and nothing that they said would happen for me has happened. I'm still by myself. I'm not married for those who choose to be married. I'm not in a relationship for those who desire a relationship. I'm not, I haven't had, you know, where's my husband? And I don't want my babies. For those who desire, once again, to be married and have children. Some not everyone wants to have children, which is fine. 
I've got, you know, best friends who have no children. That was a decision that they made. Uh, I have friends, best friends who have children. You know, that is a personal decision that a woman has, you know, a woman makes. Because as you guys know, I love being a mom. I love, oh my gosh, I love my son so much. They're so amazing. But that's how women usually enter the world of wealthy wife. It's just a case of, you know what, I want more. I desire more. I'm ready to step into my personal power. That's why I discuss the muse. Because in case you guys didn't know, because you know, every school has a mascot. My mascot is the muse. And guess what the muse is? The muse is you. Yes, for those of you that choose to embody, choose to learn self, choose to get to know who you truly are underneath your exterior, and then learn how to showcase you, the authentic you, and it's a process. I discuss this all the time. It is a process. It is not something that you're doing. It's something that you are becoming and being. There is such a difference between doing, 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 because that's what you've been taught. You know, this whole masculine paradigm, this whole masculine energy, because masculine and lenity is about doing. It's action steps. It's making things happen. It's getting things done. That is definitely necessary and needed, but... As a woman, that's part of our toolbox. That's not our toolbox. We are creation. We are the energy of creation. So we literally are supposed to be being. Learning yourself. Learning what makes you so uniquely amazing. How you speak. How you walk. How you dress. How you experience life. How you share life. As I say this again, each one of you has unique qualities about you that could make you Oh, gosh, it could make you very rich because you're moving, if that's what you choose to do. Because once again, not everybody desires money and uh, to be rich, should I say, because we all need money. Money is a part of the process. And people talk about money's not everything. Money is everything. Let's be clear, because without it, you don't eat. Without it, you don't dress. Without it, in our culture, because it's, and even in other cultures, their money may not be paper, dollars, and coins. It may be some other type of currency. What is, I believe there's a tribe, and I don't know what tribe it is, in Africa, and I'm sure this has been different tribes throughout the, throughout you know the millenniums or the eons. That cow, cattle, cattle are currency, and I believe that's how they pay the, the dowry for the, to the wife's family is the gentleman brings cows, you know, to add to her father's flock. So doesn't matter how we do it; it's always some exchange, some type of exchange of energy has to take place for us to live. We're energetic beings, so we have to understand the reciprocity behind the giving of energy. You know, yes. So money is very important. It's your relationship with money that gets kind of messed up. Because so often people have been taught that, you know, it doesn't grow on trees, that's too expensive. No. No. When you change your mindset, and by the way, this is one of the classes that I have in the, uh, the preparatory school, the Rich Habit of the Rich Life, we talk about the money mindset. We talk about your mindset because here's the deal. Even if you're out here buying all these expensive things, the cars, the shoes, the house, the this, the that, if your money mindset isn't right, if your relationship, your emotional, mental, spiritual relationship with money is still off, you're going to struggle. It's going to be hard. You're going to be like making yourself crazy because it still makes you uncomfortable to have these beautiful things. That's what you hear people talk about, be humble. We already know how much I despise the word humble. I've gone through enough videos on that. Uh, you know, basically tell you stay, stay in your lane or you don't know your place. No, no, money is meant to be shared. Money is meant to be received. Money is meant to be so many things because it's the energy and it's the ability of money that makes it possible for us to be creative, for us to expand and grow, for us to share, for us to be able to give to others, for us to be able to pour into the charities and the things that really talk to speak to our heart. My big thing is rescues. You know, one of my goals, and I will have it one day, and I finally get situated in my actual home, home, and you know, and living out the parts of my life that I'm now planning for, one of my goals, I don't know if I shared with you guys before or not, is to actually have a rescue. I would love to own like 50 acres someplace that literally I put a rescue. It's got barns and, you know, hot veterinary hospitals and, you know, everything that's needed, volunteers, employees, whatever, everything that is going to be needed so that when people do not desire their animals, just drop them off with us. We will take care of them. I don't care. It will be a variety of animals, not just cats and dogs. It will be a variety of animals. Because that's something that just touches my heart. Because if you know my about my, how I, I receive my cats, all of my cats have been strays. I've never went someplace and bought a cat. 
And even when I had my dogs, I've had one dog that I had. I had a, a dog when I was a child. My mother bought for us, but she was a pedigree. My one of my great aunts actually raised uh, raised Schnauzers, miniature Schnauzers. So my first dog was a pedigree, which my mother purchased for one of her aunts. But my first, the dog that I have my with my children, he was a pound puppy. I mean, I literally went to the dog pound and purchased him. He was like six weeks old. So, and my cats, all of my cats come from the streets. I know, right? All of them. Munchkin, the one I talk about so often, Kit Kat, the one you guys hear in the background, who you just heard earlier jump up on his thing to look out the window. He was outside, a little teeny tiny little kitten. Who I don't have, I'm assuming his mother must have abandoned him. And he was too young to be abandoned at that. He was like only five weeks old. I don't think he was even six weeks old. So he was barely weaned, if weaned at all, from her. But somehow, some way, either he wouldn't stay with her, or she finally just gave it, gave it, try to keep track of him. He wound up by my by my condo, and long story short, here we are, six what seven and a half years later. So rescues are very important to me. So one day I will have them, but until I have my own, I donate to others. Because my thing with this, when I talk about donating to charities, I want to make sure the money that I'm offering up and, you know, pouring into somebody, they're going to receive is going to help benefit their purpose. So often we did, a, we did uh, give money to all these larger organizations. When you sit down and look at where the money goes, it's like 1% to 2% goes to the purpose. The rest of it goes to administration fees, this or that, which I get it. You have to pay employees, et cetera, et cetera. You know, you've got things to maintain. You know, there's stuff that, has, that goes into a business. But so little of the actual money that's donated goes to the people that is meant to help. So my recommendation is if you're going to do charitable things, which I do recommend, that you find something local to pour into your money. Another thing that I do, because once again we're talking about money is good, money is great because you can do things with it that are beneficial and helpful, not just for yourself but for others. Also during the holidays, like the holidays are about to come up, can you also can you believe that what Thanksgiving is next month, Christmas is after that, New Year's Eve is coming up. All these, our holiday season begins. It kicks off with Halloween and it keeps on rolling to the end of the year. So what I also will do is I will, um, I give stuff to charity. I give stuff to food banks, like where I live, they collect, you know, they collect food and different items, personal items for, to donate to a local charity. I do that. I have, in the past, I've actually adopted families. You know, I've actually taken the time out to adopt families to assist them, you know, in helping mothers purchase, especially single moms, purchase, you know, clothing and toys and, you know, offer up a food voucher for them so they can actually have a great meal, meals for the holiday. So those are the kind of things that I currently do in reference to sharing. Because sharing is a very vital part of wealth and riches. So money is very important. We talk about so what else we discuss. Oh, also, and I, also in the uh, the uh, music preparatory school, I know I've shared with you guys before, is the type of man because I have the blueprint, the rich man, the wealthy wise rich man blueprint. Because once again, when you're learning yourself, you're also going to be learning about who it is you le- desire to have as your romantic partner. Like I said, not every woman that I work with desires to be with a rich man. I know some of you are going really, yeah, really. Most do, and the ones that really desire that, they're, they have either accomplished the goal or they're in the process of accomplishing the goal. But not everybody wants to date an affluent, rich, or wealthy man. They want to simply live a great life. And by based upon their definitions, what's important to them. Because remember, not everybody's looking for designer clothes. Not everybody desires to drive a Mercedes Benz. Everybody, everyone has their own ideology, their own dream of what wealth and riches is. You know, I think about this and I think in terms of, you know, the women that I work with, because I said before, my clients that I work with, they can be anywhere from college students that I'm working with actively, like in the master classes. I have high school students that take the classes too because they come to the online academy, um, all the way to wealthy wives. I mean, I work with wealthy wives. It's, it's so crazy, but it really is the truth. <laughs> So the wealthy wives, you know, they have they have access to, like I said before, they have access to stuff that the average person, even a rich person, may not have access to. You know, I've got wealthy, I work with women who actually spend time. Do you see these fashion shows? Because I love watching the fashion shows. I, I catch uh, snippets of them on Instagram. I have clients that go to those shows. Front row seats at those shows. So I'm sharing that just to say this. They love the shop. 
And we were, we were talking about me the other day. I was laughing. We were talking because, you know, she's talking about, you know, the things she loves to do and the things she dislikes doing because we're working on, once again, you know, what do you desire? Who are you, who are you? What do you desire in your whys? And I'm laughing because she was talking about the fact that, you know, she did certain things that she didn't like because they show they were boring. But she loves to shop. She loves to shop. I mean, she is somebody who, like I said, designers come to her. And that's great. It's wonderful. I think it's awesome. And she was like, she goes, you understand. It's like, no, I go, I, don't, I, go, I, I dislike shopping. I go, I'm not that person you're going to find. Mm -mm. Going to a mall, oh my gosh, just like dragging your nails across a chalkboard for me. Ugh. I find no pleasure in going and hanging out at the mall. I dislike running in and out of stores trying on clothes. I did it throughout my childhood because my mother loved to shop. I'm just not that big on it. Online shopping, ooh. Oh, I love it. I love it. Because I can find so many things that actually cater to my taste. Or to have my clothes custom made. Because that's the direction I'm heading in at this we speak. So I'm sharing this because she was, and we laughed about it. Because, you know, she's got wardrobes on top of wardrobes on top of wardrobes on top of wardrobes. I mean, she, she, she's she got tons and tons and tons of beautiful, gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous clothes. And it makes her happy. And I respect that. I honor that. Like I said, whatever it is that makes you happy, adds to your joy, I'm all about it. But you have to know yourself. So this way you're not being drugged into other people's ideologies and then feeling like you're like you're a bad person or something wrong with you because you disagree with them. I'll say this again. In this whole femininity movement, there's still so much doing, 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 doing. Because yes, their action steps must be made. But where does the being come into it? You know, when you're going through the classes, like I said, the, uh, the master classes I included in the startup for the preparatory school, you know, we go over, I got a course called A Course in Love. That, you know, when you start really tapping into you and beginning to understand some of the roadblocks and emotional roadblocks that might be there, mental roadblocks that might be there, learning how to laugh, learning how to dream, learning how to really, once again, come back to self. And they're really thinking about what you desire. Talk about how to manifest. There's a course in there on how to manifest. That meditation, whole process. And I'll be adding more things like that, or that to the preparatory school. Because once again, the preparatory school is there to prep you guys for the classes I'll be putting into the online academy. The online academy literally would be the more advanced classes. I've been looking through, like I said, the information I've been teaching over the past uh, few years. I've been listening to the feedback of, you know, the women I've been working with, my goddaughters. I've been watching, you know, responses to stuff, you know, who's getting work done, who's not. Because here's the thing. When you guys are on the online academy, I can see your progress. I don't know exactly what you are not working on, but I can see how much of a course you finish. Yes, I can check that stuff. I can check all of it. So, and I, I sit back and think, and sometimes people, you know, life gets in the way, whatever, but it's a case of you must be willing to commit yourself to this journey. You yeah, realize people sometimes think that, you know, this should be a quick fix. How is it going to be a quick fix if you haven't fixed you? You know, you're reaching for something that's out of your out of your reach, out of your realm, so to speak. You want to step in the space after rich and wealthy dating. You want to step in the space after the rich and wealthy living, but you are still living in a middle class or poverty mindset. How are you going to be able to change that overnight? You can't. It takes time. It takes self reflection. It takes. I mean, introspect. Hold on, my daughter, goddaughter, put it. Introspection. Yes, that's what I work on. We work on it so much because until you learn you, it is going to be difficult to hang on to to keep what you may have accomplished. Because in the back of your mind, there's always going to be this nagging voice. I don't know. Oh, you just think you better. Just who do you think you are? You got. Mm, you know how you are. You know what happened last time. You received this. It's just going to be all this noise in your brain. It's going to keep just, just dragging you back, dragging you back. No. You must be willing to dedicate this to you. This is your journey. This is your path. This is your story. And I have the tools. That's what I love about this. I, and I know they work because I've seen so many great results. And I do have testimonials on this particular, when I did the uh, description for the um, preparatory school. I love that I have the opportunity to assist women who are ready for personal growth and willing to do the work. You're doing this for you. 
You're not doing it to show off to anybody else. You're not doing it to stunt for the gram. You're doing this because you know you're ready for more. You know you're ready for better. You know you're ready for the best. Forget just better. You're ready for the best. And the best is going to be based upon what you desire. If it's, you know, you're going to be like my goddaughter, like it's the one I'm working with right now. I've got several others that are in the same position as her. But if you want to be that woman who's going to be sitting front row at, you know, Paris Fashion Week, Milan Fashion Week, Je I don't know, Asian Fashion Week, I don't know what, what countries they Singapore, I guess. Uh, I don't know. I don't follow it that hardcore. Um, New York Fashion Week, whatever. If you want to really be, if that is that your dream? To be able to sit front row and talk to, you know, Anna Wintour or, or you know, whoever the it person is, you know, the, the editors of these fashion magazines and the various people that are making these connections because i'll say it again so many of these wealthy wives if you met them you would be surprised because most of them are very nondescript some of them are glamorous absolutely but most of them truly in their day-to-day -day, they're very nondescript you would never you will walk past them have no idea what they're worth Boca Raton was such a great example of that where i used to spend my time these women going back and forth at these various stores if you saw them they look like just just normal People always expect rich and wealthy people to be, you know, be all these grand and you know flashy people. Most of them have serious money. They're not. They're really, really not. You just have to know what you're looking at when they're wearing their clothing. The jewelry. The jewelry usually is a tip off. When you look at the jewelry, you're kind of going, uh, okay, <laughs> I get it. Because I'll say it again. Most of their handbags, nondescript, but their handbags you and I are not going to be able to purchase. Now, now that I have an in, I probably can get my hands on them as you know as as needed. If I was in the handbags, I now have, the, you know, access to them, uh, courtesy of, you know, the, the woman that, like client that I'm working with, but that's not my thing. I just it makes me laugh. I don't know. I, I'm sorry, guys. I just I'm sitting there thinking about some conversations, but I'm saying this once again. You have to be deciding what it is that makes you happy. Maybe, like I said, you're someone like me who prefers, you know, my idea after rich and wealth is land. A land, purchasing land, you know, and putting together, you know, a community. You know, my one of my visions is once again, I want I want a, I want a healing community. That is something else that I, I, I'm sharing this with you guys for the first time. That to me is wealth and riches. Riches and wealth, should I say is have a community that I can actually teach because my goal one day literally is to have a community. There will be a college there. There will be a, a, a health facility there. It's going to be everything. There's going to be so many things there that tie into the world of Wealthy Wife and what her vision and what she stands for because Wealthy Wife, once again, is about not just about becoming the wife, wife of a man with, you know, with a man of means, so to speak, but it's about you learning how to become a wealthy woman. And part of your wealth is your health. You know, for those who have been following me on my Instagram page, the Wealth of Academy page, you, you guys know, I've been doing a, a grape detox these past couple, that's about two weeks. It'll be two weeks on Saturday. And I'm just now sort of kind of ease myself out of it. But even so, I'm still going to stay on the fruits, you know, and the, and the vegetables and stuff like that because I love how I feel. You know, I, it just, I, every season I do some type of cleanse because once again, my health is part of my wealth plan. And in learning how to take care of me, that means I can also learn how to assist others or guide them in a direction where they can receive assistance. Let's say this once more. One of my best friends, she's a master herbalist, naturopath, physician, and an attorney. Lawyer. Okay, lawyer. Because then she didn't, she didn't take the bar. But it doesn't matter. And she, I told you, I'll say it again. She, she, and she can stomp any lawyer. This, she is any attorney. She is badass, badass. Oh, my God, she's amazing. But um, I have access to people who... Once again, have knowledge and wisdom. And she is somebody I would most likely be going into business with when I finally get the, the whole community put together because her information is top tier. She's been studying it for like 30 years now because she's a little older than I am. But these are the things to me that are wealth consciousness because these are things I'm going to be able to pass on to my family. These are things that can stay in the family. These, this, is, this is part of my legacy that I will leave to my family and the world. So, once again, when you're thinking about what it means to move in a world of wealthy wife and how you're showing up as this woman, your feminine power, obviously, yes. 
And I'll be talking about that because I'll be talking, I'm going to be doing my next audio probably about uh, the wisdom, uh, feminine wisdom. And because you're hearing all this energy, all these people talk right now about dark, dark feminine energy. And people are nervous about the word dark. And I'm like going, don't be nervous about the word dark because when you know what femininity is. Hang on one second. Sorry, guys. The cat's walking all over my stuff. Um, when you really, really, really know what feminine energy is, it is dark energy. And dark has nothing to do with being evil, nothing to do with being bad. No. That's how somebody chooses to use the energy, but that's not what dark feminine energy is. But I will go into deeper details on that on the next audio that I'm going to do. I don't want this audio to go on forever and ever. But once again, this goes back to self-awareness and learning how to do your research, learning how to find the kind of guidance that taps you back into yourself, learning your truth. And do it in a way that, like I said, initially is going. It's uncomfortable, ladies. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna sugarcoat this for you. It is uncomfortable, because I've, as I've said in other audios, you have to unlearn things that people taught you that you thought had your best interest, and they thought they had their your best interest at heart. Some, some not, not so much, but people that do love you and taught you things that you're now learning are like mm, not quite right or just out, outright wrong. As you're gaining self-wisdom, they weren't doing those things to harm you for the most part, if they're truly good-hearted people, but they didn't know any better. So it's up to you to unlearn. It's up to you to now be that wise woman. Because remember, you're the spiritual head of your household. All the creation comes from us. So we are the spiritual head of our households. And that starts with us. Our emotional, mental, physical, spiritual state of being, which definitely influences our financial state of being and the capacity that we have to draw to us the things that truly, truly light up our lives in the most positive ways. So, if you have not enrolled in the Wealthy Wife Muse Preparatory School or you're curious about it, go ahead and click on the link in the description. Check it out. And I said, my goal is always to offer you guys information that is life-changing in a very profound way. But also does in a way because we have the community. Because also, once you join it, um, I know some of you have done it already. Go ahead and introduce yourself because there is a, I have a community set up in there that we're starting to build out. Where you have a chance to go to the Wealthy Wife Muse. You just go in there once you enroll in the, uh, the membership. Once you do that, go over to the community and introduce yourself. Have a chance to meet your God sisters. And I guess I pop in there. I'm actually I'm getting better at comp putting comments in and you know and, and having you know communication back and forth. I will be posting additional things to the course because once again this is about this is the foundation space for a wealthy wife. This is where we lay the foundation for you to begin to unwind and unravel all of the collective nonsense that you've been listening to that has you excuse me, sitting here confused and not sure what your next step is meant to be. This is the safe space. This is your sacred space where you now begin to learn. We're going to talk about, once again, tapping into the feminine energy of being. Not just doing, but becoming and being. We are so powerful as women when we are moving in our truth, unbothered, Grateful, happy, playful, prosperous, in a space of pleasure and play. We can be serious when we need to be. We can take you out at the knees when we have to. I tell people, hear me, the warrior, she's still very much a part of my personality. I haven't had to tap into her since my, now my children are grown and my father has passed. I don't have to tap into her very often, but she's still very much a part of who I am. And uh, she's pretty awesome, to put it mildly. And there's no fear about her energy because I know she's a part of me because without her, I cannot be this version of me, so to speak. So this is where we begin to really tap into you. So anyway, that's all I want to share with you guys today. Once again, you know I adore you. I appreciate you. Click on the link below so you can actually go get a better details and information about the Wealthy Wife Preparatory, Music Preparatory School. 
And I look forward to uh, seeing those of you that do enroll and meeting you next month at our next Zoom call. I might do a little sooner. I'm not sure yet. I'm looking at my schedule. But every second Saturday of the month, we do a Zoom call. Gives me a chance to see all of you. Gives you a chance to ask me questions. And you can ask questions between calls. Not like there's only time you can ask me questions. You can email me questions if you have questions, just so you know. And that's all. So thank you so much, and we'll talk soon. Bye-bye.